the American healthcare system, it's generating rivers of money that are flowing into very few pockets. And those are the pockets of the manufacturers of medical devices, the big insurers, the pharmaceutical companies, and the owners of those pockets do not want anything to fundamentally change. I don't recall any time telling a lie, but I know that there were many times that I didn't disclose full information. Now, I was the company's chief spokesman. I was head of corporate communications, which means I was the top public relations officer for the company. When you're in the inner circle of the health insurance company, what's most important is meeting Wall Street's expectations. And they have to. These for-profit companies, by law, have to serve shareholders. People go in and out of health plans. They may be a member of the health plan for a year and maybe no longer. You don't necessarily make a lot of investments in, in preventive care for someone who's not going to be a part of your health plan for, for a long period of time. It just doesn't uh, work out financially. The only way that you can continue to make the profits that you are expected to make is to charge more for the policies. Insurance companies have always been able to regulate the rates they charge. They can pretty much get away with increasing the rates as much as they want to. forget that what you're doing is providing health insurance. It's all about the numbers and how many millions of dollars, if not billions of dollars, you're earning uh, uh, in profits. In the summer of 2007, I read about a health care expedition that was being held by Remote Area Medical, a few miles from where I grew up. I decided out of curiosity to go check this out. All these folks have driven from four and five hundred miles away, waiting to get care that was being provided to them free. The folks who were there were not trying to shirk their responsibilities. They couldn't get insurance. They either couldn't afford it, or many of them worked for small employers that had been purged by big insurance companies. It was either come and get care there or not get care at all. And every year they have to turn people away. It was like something that I could never have imagined that I ever see in this country. And I knew what I was doing for a living was making it necessary for those folks to stand in line to wait for care in analog stalls and barns. I ultimately had a crisis of conscience because I was not at all proud of what I was doing. I had difficulty sleeping at night. Uh, there were even times, honestly, that I looked in the mirror and I said, how did, how did you get here? I just could not continue doing what I was doing.